get you, get you, yeah, yeah, when the lights is off. I'm summertime, crushing, put that game on ball. Some love, I'm here to show it to you. Oh. It's on every block in your hood, so I can still make a play and never stop in your hood. Bought some new Glock, so I'm good. Pound stocky as shit. Uh, I don't even want to waste any time, you know. We, we know why we're here. I know why you're here. The weekend dropped a new album called Dawn FM. Now, if I know about The weekend, I know about me. And all I know about Abel is that he just liked me for real. So it's always scary and a little haunting listening to his music because I feel like I'm getting new parts of myself revealed to myself. You know, I like when artists don't do the whole foreplay rollout thing. They just whip it out. That's what I need from music in 2022. I don't need a big rollout. I don't need you to keep promoting it over and over again. I don't need you to drop two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten singles. Just whip it out, bro. Just un unloosen the waistband, whip it out. That's all I need. Yeah, let, 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 let's hear where he goes with it. I want I want to see it. Uh, the first track is Dawn FM. Why not? You know what I'm saying? It's already a classic. How does he keep doing it every time? Every record. This nigga just like... Oh, my God. So I'm assuming Jim Carrey is going to be narrating throughout the record, which is fine. I don't mind. Jim Carrey is a goat. And you know, I said I felt like in the last album with After Hours, it felt like some of the tracks were almost like this ascension into, you know, a UFO or, you know, being taken to a place unknown. That had such a welcoming atmosphere. Like, like, hello, we've been waiting for you. Like just a choir in synths. That's what that track was to me. Oh, uh, the next track is Gasoline. Well, light me up, bitch. I don't know exactly what's happening here, but I like it. What? What is this accent? Maybe he not just like me for real. Okay. So that track is a little confusing for me because I like it on one hand, but the accent really throws me off. I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of that in any capacity. And uh, the hook is really good. I actually enjoy uh, what The weekend has to say about instructing, what to do with his body if he dies. And this other accent, or maybe it's an alter ego, uh, comes in talking about how nihilistic he is and talking about how he doesn't really believe in an afterlife, how he knows there's nothing after this. So I don't know if he's doing what he's doing with this accent to kind of represent a different side of himself and if it's going to be present throughout the whole album i hope not uh only way to find out is to keep listening how do i make you love me is track number three okay we not alike bro we that you're not just like me for real mushroom tea what the fuck is that any good because people have definitely tried to make me mushroom tea before and i was like nah bro it's, that's not going down my throat Oh my god, yes. Love me. Um, I like what's happening instrumentally at the last bit of that track too. Um, I really like the hook on that one too. He's get, he's getting really, really good with the hooks. This whole 80s synth heavy music, I think he's really uh, doing a, a good job with the hooks. Uh, if I'm listening to this track, I just don't know. Is he talking about himself when he's saying, how do I make you love me? I know he said, girl. But you know, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to wrap my head around this thing. Um, I've already heard "Take My Breath." I'm gonna listen to it again off camera. But yeah, okay, that transition from track number three into "Take My Breath" is crazy. Uh, y'all know I wasn't a huge fan of "Take My Breath." Um, after listening to it a couple more times, you know, it definitely has that disco kind of vibe. So, um, it's enjoyable. Not my favorite, but it's enjoyable. Um, track number five is "Sacrifice." Let's see what let's see what it's hitting for. <laughs> Okay, Michael Jackson, what the fuck? I hate being that guy too. I hate comparing The Weeknd and Michael Jackson, but like when when we have examples like this, it's like, bro, where where else are you gonna go with this song other than Thriller? This is the same song. Okay, maybe not though. Are you serious right now? Also, shout out Abel again for what I think sounds like Alicia Myers. I want to thank you. Classic song that I think he's sampling in Sacrifice. If he is, he's goaded. <laughs> flows the inflections oh my god what the fuck was that oh, he does it every time like clearly it's homage but he also like did his own spin with it that hook is really infectious wow and that's even worse because when you think about the thriller music video the whole video was basically like him him reintroducing himself to her as a zombie and at the end we see that like that never like left him 
and he was still evil at the end. So it's like listening to this version, it's almost like a continuation. Like imagine Michael Jackson sacrificing the girl or just straight up killing or eating her in part two of a thriller music video. That would be crazy. Protect women though, but I'm just saying. Oh my God. Oh my God, he really just like me. Because at the end of the day, right? My convenience, what I want to do comes before what you want to do. Like what I want to do and who I want to be with for the moment comes before whatever relationship we got. And I'm not saying that like a scumbag. I'm just saying, I'm just being honest. Convince myself that like, this is the way I should just, you know, one path, one, one, one person, one path. But then it's just like, it's not possible. Where was Michael Jackson when he shot the Thriller video? The streets. Yeah, this this track is insane. It's speaking to me on an emotional. It's nice because I, I feel like a little Daft Punk influence at the end of that track too. Oh, uh, the next track we've got is a tale by Quincy. Jesus Christ, bro. I want the weekend over some jazz. Like some deep jazz or a lot of heavy bass, like with the bass line. I I would love to hear shit like that from the weekend. I don't know how he would do it. Because his voice is just so soft. It's not it doesn't have like the depth of like a uh, like a d'angelo or like a like a joe hell even a vaunt i would love to hear a vaunt again this is getting me too emotional get put in a straight jacket and taken out of my home when i was only seven years old is uh abel close with his parents like his mother because i don't know like if he if it, like i would assume he would put this in here because he empathizes with what quincy jones is saying right now but losing your parents to uh such a you know, mentally debilitating disease at such a young age. Uh, track number seven, we've got uh, Out of Time. Okay. He just did what I asked for, kind of. What does this remind me of? This is a combination of synth porn and I forgot what the song is. He's referencing a song right now and I don't know what it is. Oh my God. Yo, the way the synths are in the background is like a rare Pokemon just floating around the weekend's voice, just like chirping in, chiming in. They sound so like alive and active, even though they're just parts of the soundtrack. That's what I love so much about the synth and how they can be used. Um, and especially the way the weekend uses them, because there are they're like little accents or ad libs to what he's already giving, like these really heavenly kind of ghostly vocal sometimes. I love that he uses the synths in that way. And I like for most people to use them in that way. Just like these little playful additions in the background that seemingly float around the, the, the artist's voice. I really like the way those are used. Yeah, you, He's about to get album of the year and we a week in. Oh, this is perfect. This is definitely some shit that like a toxic I don't want to say toxic. Nah, this is toxic. This is toxic. It's like literally showing up a week before you know your ex is supposed to get married and you know that she still has that little spot for you and you just creep in anyway just to put that little seed of doubt in her new relationship. I'm not saying I would do that or have done it or will do it again. I'm not really seeing the narrative that the old man face uh, Abel is supposed to be bringing though. So we'll see if uh, if we get anything uh the more we listen to the album but so far i'm having a really good time with this here we go again with uh tyler creator oh shit Said you wanted your boyfriend, bro i'm not standing up y'all not about to see something i'm not standing up this is so uh physically draining because of the weekend's voice like the way he uses his voice is like a cloud. It reminds me a lot of the way Jessica Pratt uses her voice is almost like this guide you through whatever the atmosphere in the song is giving already. And their voices can sometimes be like uh, alien-esque or even angelic. Like when I'm listening to music like this, it really feels intimate to the point where I'm almost allowing Abel to drive me. Oh my God. Oh my lord i just remember tyler the creator is still supposed to give a feature this is a beautiful song well because we like to touch we don't need no damn religion telling us that we in love this is amazing oh man we just adding to some of the best tracks this man has ever released like in life it's inviting while being like brutally honest about this almost 
doubt that you have that this relationship will work because it's as successful starting out as your previous and you know how this shit goes you know that uh given your past experiences you're a great opener um but the, the longer you i guess continue down this road just like earlier tracks we can't forget the earlier tracks where he clearly says that i don't want to sacrifice my time just to consider like your love basically so we're going right back into the cycle of meet a new girl uh you know make her fall for you not really comprehend what you're doing in the moment because you feel good in the moment but long term you know that that feeling is going to creep up on you again like i want to do my own thing but now this person has an attachment to me i do consider i love them but i don't love them enough to sacrifice what i want to do you know what i mean so it's like we're just going right back into the same little spiral and it's funny that he acknowledges that but can't really fight against it despite how much he tries but this track is really deceiving too because it's like this is almost like a get married type of soundtrack like we're we're in love we're so deeply and madly in love I'm, I'm i'm looking at all your attributes right now but at the end of the day it still don't mean shit. track number nine is best friends no, 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 what the fuck? Okay. Oh, huh, no. What is this referencing? I hear it in the background now. That's what I feel like I hear in the background. It's like I can fit that part of the song in the spaces in this song, and it's so weird. best friends is a banger it just reinforces the narrative that you know you're entering these situations knowing that stuff's gonna go wrong and when stuff goes wrong you're like uh track number 10 is is there someone else that's a crazy thing to say after telling someone that we can't be anything more than friends that little vocal in the back i'm gonna fall in love with it I love this song too because now he's getting like a taste of his own medicine um it don't feel good especially when he like you know you commit to this change and then there's like two options i feel like when he says you know i don't want to be a prisoner to who i used to be he could be implying that like my ego is still so like so big such a big part of me that if you're going outside the boundaries and you're going with someone else i'll do the same thing and my ego is going to bring me back to who i used to be or prisoner in that he now sees himself in you and now because he loves you so much um you're shackling him to who he used to be because you're just a to you're just as, as toxic as he used to be so i like this i like this a lot um next track is starry eyes uh not the biggest fan of starry eyes seems pretty empty in comparison to the other tracks or what they're doing though if anything this was probably one of the most transitionary tracks that i've heard since the album started in that it is really consistent and that it just builds intensity over time and getting you from one place to another but as far as like it being interesting or you know having anything like uh, catchy or ear grabbing like that not really in my opinion track number 12 is every angel is terrifying uh, I'm sitting up here thinking we about to get a fucking track. This nigga is like scrolling through the fucking radio stations. Uh, track number 13 is Don't Break My Heart. I'm not really a big fan of Don't Break My Heart like that. It reinforces the same messages that the earlier tracks do about him being fearful and terrified of him having his heart broken after he's done it to so many others. But um, it doesn't enforce that message or reinforce it with any kind of intensity or any kind of like earworms or, or catchiness. It's a more bland version of tracks that I feel like have already given us the same message earlier in the album. So I don't really feel like it's necessary. Uh, track number 14, I Heard You're Married featuring Lil Wayne. This this ought to be toxic, 100%. Mm. Yeah. Who the fuck is Earl? Oh my God. You know, it's interesting, like I said again, having uh, The weekend almost victimizing himself to uh, a, a woman that's kind of getting over on him after he's admitted to doing it so many other times. I don't know if this 
helps to reinforce this loop aspect that maybe you know you're forced to relive the the life that you used to live or maybe you're always going to be a prisoner to your past because it's going to catch up with you but the weekend in the future version of himself is what's going to talk to the younger version of himself so it's very difficult to kind of understand exactly what's happening so what was old nigga abel trying to do in that music video when he was warning young nigga abel was he warning him to not do what you're doing because it's eventually going to break your own heart it has to be like just trying to go back and, and and prevent yourself from doing things that are going to lead to a dead end and is every attempt at that like a failure uh, track number 15 is less than zero <laughs> Oh yeah. This is like dream pop almost. It's crazy that he's gone from, that's not crazy. Cause I feel like that's a natural evolution when he makes such emo-esque R&B music um, with such ghostly vocals. And he keeps transitioning deeper and deeper into um, synth music. And he starts going the eighties pop route. And I feel like, you know, dream pop and chamber pop aren't far away for the weekend to, to, to like dip and dabble in. That is like the natural progression that I feel like he's going with. So, I mean, that's a very, I'm like, I'm super open to him experimenting with that sound as well. And I love how, despite how like quiet and intimate those settings can be um, for that type of music, um, he's still making very expressive hooks with it. I'm gonna sing this all over the place. This is crazy. Yeah, Lesson Zero is definitely one of my favorite tracks. And we finally have the last track, Phantom Regret. Is Jim Carrey gonna sing? This just sounds sad as fuck. Oh, hold on. If Jim Carrey starts singing, I'm turning the album on. You're tuned to Don FM. What the fuck? And how many grudges did you take to your grave? Were you ever in tune with the song Life Was Humming? Oh, wow. Out of time, there's nothing Wait, you're going a little too deep. No Relax. I know that you've been, um, you know, definitely undergoing your own spiritual awakening i would say over the last decade but calm the fuck down all right because i didn't come here to be attacked i didn't come here to be exposed i came here to listen to a fucking album your mind, your soul to a i hate the way that ended because the silence is very disturbing even though it's supposed to be really freeing just the, those little final moments like it's chilling. So after listening to it, I feel like uh, that that answers my question. The only reason that Abel is not able to move on <clears throat> is because um, he's living with those, you know, phantom regrets. And he's trying to rewrite the past in a way that he can die with no regrets, with no grudges, with nothing looming over his life. Um, and he's just forced to kind of relive it over and over again. And that spirit never rests. It never goes away. I feel like that's why he's aged so much on the cover because he spent so much time trying to rewrite the past or trying to make things different. Oh, it could be a totally different reason why he's old as fuck on the cover. I don't 100% know, but you know, the more I listen to it, the more I feel like I'll get a good, good grasp of uh, what's happening. When it comes to Dawn FM, because I know people are immediately going to compare this to After Hours. I definitely think this explores deeper into, uh, you know, transitionary territory, if that's a word, not territory transitionary, um, than After Hours did. After Hours was a much stronger homage to 80s synth pop than I feel like this is. This explores elements of disco, uh, explores deeper elements of R&B overall, explores chamber pop. Um, explore as a uh, dream pop a little bit more feel like this is that evolutionary album for able to dive into something else outside of the 80s music on the next record we definitely had strong 80s music um you know homages on this on this record namely the sacrifice uh album or the sacrifice song that heavily references thriller but there are too many other elements on this record that i feel able is exploring for me to ignore um, that he's clearly about to transition for his next record into something that is going to be, I won't say unrecognizable, but totally different from these last two albums. And thinking about that, um, I would say that this probably is a record that, you know, usually experiments don't usually go over smoothly. And there are definitely some dull parts to this album, uh, mostly the word pieces that we get from Quincy Jones and from Jim Carrey. I don't mind Jim Carrey, don't get me wrong, 
um it's just i don't feel like they were present enough on the album but then again he never really made it seem like it was a big deal for them to be on the record you just mentioned them being on the record so um jim carrey being at the end i i liken it to maybe like morgan freeman for instance on savage mode 2 morgan freeman was such a big part uh when we talk about the narrative or when we talk about narrating savage mode 2 that it made sense for uh him to be promoted with the album as he was jim carrey i feel like was promoted along with the record but just wasn't as heavy of a part in it uh but that final track he definitely got in his bag i find that interesting how how jim carrey and morgan freeman were all uh were in the uh, bruce almighty movie and both of them went on to narrate you know albums almost in like a authoritative you know kind of way authoritative figure when morgan freeman passed that god power on to bruce in the movie in the movie i remember uh how Jim Carrey is basically saying to Morgan Freeman, I just want to simplify everything. I don't want to complicate anything. I want what I could have done on my own. And when he comes back to life, when he wakes up again, he like accepts things like the way they are. And so I feel like with this album, we're talking about The Weeknd, we're talking about Abel and Jim Carrey's advice to him. I just thought that was really fitting that that was the narrative for the entire Bruce Almighty movie and Abel is needing to get to a point of acceptance with the things that happened because he wanted to die a certain way without certain regrets. Listening to this, you know, I feel like a lot of it is about control. Uh, a lot of it is about decisions, anxieties and fears, especially for Abel, given how he knows his nature and what it leads him to do generally. And he's afraid of it happening to him to such a degree that he's coming up with scenarios and, and plan B's and in order to protect himself. It's a real interesting album. Um, can I say right now whether I like it more than After Hours? I really can't. Definitely think there are parts of this album that could be dropped or, you know, shortened all together. I don't really think it needed to be 16 tracks, maybe 12. Uh, but overall, I enjoyed this album. I think there are some really strong songs on this record as well. Sacrifice being a really strong contender. The one that was narrated by Jim Carrey at the end was great. Though I would have loved to hear what The Weeknd would have sounded like had he given a performance on that track. Uh, Best Friends, Here We Go Again. Um, I hope you, I heard you're married, less than zero. How do I make you love me out of time? These are all really strong tracks. So yeah, I think this is a pretty good job. Uh, but I got to sit with it for a minute. Uh, cause this is, this is, uh, this is a doozy. So y'all let me know how you felt about this album in the comment section down below. I'm very interested to hear what you think. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Uh, peace.